Besides Lyle and his brothers Virgil and Morgan, the other member of the Earth Law Gang in Tombstone was Doc Holliday. Hello, Dylan. How are you? Good luck, boy. How are you? Good evening, everybody. I know lockdown is very draining, and I finished my tiling. I've done some work today, and at the end of the day, I just fancy watching some fish. So I don't know if you would like to watch the fish with me, but I find them very relaxing, very putative. And I'm even going to feed them now, so you can watch them eat, and it's happy fish, and hopefully they'll make you happy too. We've got to look on the bright side of life, everybody, because time is coming, and it is coming where soon this will all be over, and we're all going to appreciate life more than we've ever appreciated life before. Even though we appreciate life already, this has made us appreciate every moment, every going out, every meeting someone. There's going to be so much more appreciation. I can, I can sense it already. Appreciation is coming to us all. So enjoy watching the fish with me and appreciate the fish like I appreciate them. Shine on everybody. Keep the faith. growing town in the Old West. White's ambition grew as the town grew. So in the next election for sheriff, he supported his friend Bob Hall, a Republican, over White's boss, Johnny Behan. There were two main cowboy strongholds back then. Uh, one was Charleston down the river, the other was Gailey going in San Simone Valley. It's about where I tend to Interestingly enough, the Cowboys decided to stuff the ballot box there because they didn't want Bob Hall to become sheriff. And so what happens is they steal the election. Bob Hall and Wyatt Earp Jr. know that they steal the election. They contest the thing. And, and interestingly enough, the night that uh, Bob Hall got the tombstone and saw Wyatt Earp, Wyatt Earp was the exactly really second motion was going to lead to the gun. This is the first act of conflict between the Earths and the Cowboys. On one side were the Earths, Wyatt, Doc Holliday, and Wyatt's brother, Morgan and Virgil, who was now the city marshal. The second act leading up to the gunfight occurs on March 15, 1881, when the stagecoach leaves Tombstone. Bob Paul is riding shotgun. The driver, Bud Philpott switches positions with Paul just before the coach enters a dry wash. As the stage comes out of this wash, highwaymen jump out and yell, hold. Now this is for sure, no dispute about this. Bob Paul yells out, I hold for no one. He drops the reins, he reaches for his shotgun, and they almost fire each other at the exact same moment. Now the cowboys get Philpott. Now, whether this is part of the conspiracy or not, that's one of the theories we don't know, but we do know that Philpott is shot on the spot, and he will die from these things. Besides Philpott, a passenger is also shot, and he dies. 
Paul Wire's wife, and forms a posse. Sir forms a posse and goes out on the trail. Sheriff Johnny Beanham forms a posse. He's a Democrat. Many people think he's a little too cozy with the cowboy gang anyway. He goes out on the posse trail as well, following the Earps. The Earps get to the scene, they see spent shells on the ground, the whole thing. They start trailing. Eventually, they find one of the robbers up by Denson is detained. But Beeham approaches very quickly, and he confiscates the prisoner, since he's county sheriff. So the Earps set off on this wild goose chase. They end up on the outskirts of Tucson at the time, and they end up heading to the Dune Mountains. They end up all over the place, hunting the rest of the, this uh, outlaw group. And interestingly enough, Sheriff Behan refused help, and this is the first time the Earps have realized that they may have a serious problem with Behan. Maybe he's not really that helpful to them. So <clears throat> he refuses to send them help. They come back with horses exhausted. They're exhausted without food. And they find out that the prisoner that they confiscated and then gave to Behan has magically escaped right out the back of the jail. They thought they locked the door, but guess they didn't, and he just escapes. So now what you have is a situation where the Earps prisoner is now gone. Now, the cowboy gang seems to be spreading a rumor that Doc Holliday was one of those robbers. Now, why would they do that? Well, number one, Holliday was Wyatt Earp's very close friend. No one liked Holliday other than the Earps, so he was an easy way of shooting at the Earps if you wanted to attack and discredit them. Uh, it didn't help Holiday the fact that Bill Lennon, one of the stage robbers, was a friend of Holiday's from Las Vegas, New Mexico in the old days, and he was still in contact with him. So that didn't help either. Of course, Holiday said something very simple. He said, if I had robbed the stage, I wouldn't have botched the job. All you do is shoot the lead horse. You never shoot the driver. That's what he's really all about. At the same time, Ike's father, old man Clanton, is caught rustling cattle by Mexicans and is killed. His death further destabilizing Ike. He now fears the other cowboy gang members will learn of his deal with Wyatt and kill him. October 25th, 1881. This is when the whole thing starts to build. Ike Clanton in a spring wagon, arrives with Tom McCloud in Tucson. And they get to town, and they start going here and there. There's a gun ordinance in town by this time. Ordinance number nine. When you come into town armed, which is okay, you have to give up your gun somewhere. Go to a, a, a livery stable, check it there. Go to a hotel, check it there, some business. You don't walk around carrying arms, unless you're police, unless you have a legal reason to. <clears throat> so Ike and Tom come into town, and Ike eventually encounters Wyatt Earp. And uh, interestingly enough, Wyatt has, has sent for Doc because he wants Ike to know that he hasn't told her about the secret deal. Now, this was a miscalculation on Wyatt's part. How on earth is Doc going to tell him that he doesn't know about the secret deal without Doc finding out about the secret deal? It's not going to work. But what happens that night in the Alhambra lunch room, which where it was, was just down the street here. Um, Ike Clanton is confronted by a very angry, belligerent Doc Holliday. Holliday was dying of tuberculosis. He was an alcoholic. He used whiskey to, 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 uh, as a pain reliever. Wyatt said, I never saw anyone punish whiskey like Doc Holliday. So he's probably drunk at this point. He threatens Ike Clanton, challenges him. Let's fight. Go to fighting. Pull out your gun. Commence. Clanton says, I'm not here. I mean, I don't have a gun. That doesn't stop Holliday. He continues, and he just berates him. And ironically, Wyatt Earp is sitting there and does nothing about it. Finally, when it starts to get out of control, he tells Morgan, okay, go get them out of here. They walk out in Allen Street, but the argument still continues. Virgil Earp comes out. He's next door to the Occidental. And he comes out and says, stop it or I'll arrest all of you. It seems to stop for a while. Now Ike Clinton has been publicly humiliated by Doc Holliday, and now he goes to threaten Wyatt Earp. Wyatt Earp says, there's no money in fighting you, Ike. Go away. And he just leaves it alone. The more Ike Clanton is dismissed by the Earps, the more patronized he feels, and the more angry he gets. He follows him to the Oriental store, still the same attitude. Ironically, after threatening Wyatt Earp, he walks across the street into the Occidental, and he walks in the back room and sits down and plays poker with who? Virgil Earp, of all people. Eventually, this card game will include Virgil Earp, Johnny Behan, the Cowboys' believed best friend, Tom McClowry, as well, and Ike Clanton. So, Four major participants in the next day's activities related to the gunfight are going to be playing cards the night before. 
And as the dawn breaks, somewhere around that time, the game ends. I Clanton gets up and he sees that Virgil. Right. Let's really open up about our feelings in this session. Is it not time up? I thought I heard the dog. We're all happy to sit here until you feel ready to open your heart to us. Won't we, Bill? Yeah. Before I came here, life was a struggle. But now I know you're never going to find yourself in struggles. Makes me feel like everything's broken. And yet, no matter how hard I try, I'll never be able to fix it. Let's go. Well, how's it taste? How does it look? I'm sure it's delicious enough. Well, <clears throat> back home, it's usually takeaways, followed by a few more glasses of Pinot Grigio. I don't drink with any alcohol, I'm not greedy, is there? What would be more important than the food we put into our body? If your life is so hectic that there isn't time to cook a healthy meal, then you must change your life. Enjoy your meditation. Oh, let's begin the usual way by closing our eyes and taking a few deep. Peace of mind, I suppose. Same as everyone. I don't know that it is the same for everyone. People come here for all sorts of different things. Daniel? Wait here. Celebrate a man who quite literally needs no introduction. However, I've got the job of giving him one. What can you say about Commissioner Selwyn Harrington? That's not a rhetorical question, Harry. I need some help here. Selwyn Harrington is inscrutable, uh, a hard taskmaster. Doesn't stop a fool. Oh, supposed to be picking a man up here. Oh, perfect time to start. Just the person I need to speak. I've got to make my commissioner. What about that? Well, it drives me mad. In two days' time, I've got to stand up in front of the great and good of Tamari and say what a special man the commissioner is. Oh, I don't have a notion where to start. I mean, how, how am I supposed to make a speech about someone I hardly know? I don't know, Sam. Well, I'm just going to have to hear the deck and spend every minute of the next two days working on it. Sam, someone's been found dead. Oh. At a place called the Charming Breast Spiritual Retreat. It's up on the North Shore. To the North Shore, we must go there. I heard he's been here for a few years. So what exactly happens at a spiritual retreat? According to their website, it's a chance to reunify your mind, body, and spirit, basically. Sounds exhausting. So what's the last bit of us? Well, 
shine on everybody. Keep the faith.